我们是我们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人们的家人
ก็ยิ่งเชื่อยองเลยอ่ะตันตาตาจิกชาซีกุเรเซียตันเอนิจิกกระสุนชาคันจุมจุชายองมาเรเซียดิเกดิคันจะทุดันตาเดวตอนเ
for our nation's struggle for freedom. It has been 61 years since China ruthlessly took over and the Tibetan people inside Tibet are still suffering. How are we able to live in this free country knowing that our brothers and sisters are, sh are still suffering in Tibet? And they've been suffering for over 61 years. While we were busy here watching football on TV, a child in Tibet watched as their father got taken away by the Chinese police. While we were complaining about the cold Minnesota winters here, a family was pushing through the snow in the Himalayas in an attempt to escape the Chinese occupation. As we were just starting to get comfortable in this American life, there were Tibetans ending their lives by literally burning their bodies for Tibet. Since 2009, 156 Tibetans have self-immolated inside Tibet and 10 have self-immolated in exile in India and Nepal. These individuals were people just like you and me. They were sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, students and farmers. So when they self-immolated inside Tibet, they had their whole lives ahead of them. We cannot let their deaths go in vain. Today on this stand, we demand that Xi Jinping and the People's Republic of China allow human rights in Tibet to end the religious, cultural, gender, economic, and environmental injustices they've been committing for the past 61 years. In addition, we demand that the United States of America and the United Nations take notice and condemn the Chinese government for these actions. You must act now and act soon, because it has been 61 years too long. For my fellow Tibetans living in the free world today, future of Tibet cannot and does not lie only in the hands of the Central Tibetan Administration or the organizations. But the future of Tibet lies on the shoulders and hearts of every Tibetan individual who is standing in front of me today. This hope of achieving human rights and the safe return of Kongsa Cho to Tibet can only be fulfilled if we work inclusively and collectively, regardless of the differences among us. To my fellow young people here today, I urge you all not only to join the fight for the cause, Tibetan cause, but just as importantly, to cultivate and hold your language, your delicate language, history, and culture close to your heart. Being raised in exile, especially in the United States. We, have, we now have the special responsibility to preserve what it means to be a Tibetan. Our parents and grandparents worked so hard, but now it is on us. We are the future seeds of Tibet, and without us, there may not be a future for us. people, our culture, and our future, we must continue to fight for human rights in Tibet. It has been 61 years since we lost our country, but we cannot lose hope for Tibet. The moment we lose hope is the moment that China has officially won. However, hope itself, hope itself will not free Tibetans of their suffering. We must act. Every one of us is capable of taking an active role in the Tibetan movement, no matter how big or how small. The Chinese government may seem powerful, but they will never defeat us. Because of the strength of the Tibetan people and our supporters, we just recently saw the recent closing of the Chinese consulate's propaganda Tibetan exhibit at the Queen's Library in New York. This is just one piece of hope and piece of proof that change is just on the horizon and change is coming. Whether it takes five years or 50 years,
years. The Tibetan people will never stop resisting until China has given humanity and human rights back to Tibet. I will never settle until my late Bopalas and Mumalas are able to rest in peace knowing that we are finally able to return home. We will never stop fighting until one day we are able to stand hand in hand when th with those in Tibet on the grounds of Hassa looking to the sun with our proud Tibetan flag waving in the sky. The Tibetan people united shall always be victorious. We shall fight and we shall win. Pethan Pemi Zadengi, Pamsa De Mutune, Mirabni Mirapar the Negide. And more importantly, China may have taken control of Tibet, but it will never win the control over the hearts and the minds of the Tibetan people. Pigalo! 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 You. Sorry. Lastly, I would like to mention another date that is just as significant as today. Two days after the first Tibetan uprising, on March 12, 1959, Kundulin Kusang, along with thousands of Tibetan women, gathered outside the Potala Palace in protest against the merciless Chinese occupation. This day is known as Peki Pemi Gelang, or Tibetan Women's Uprising Day. In the following years, many of these women were imprisoned, tortured, and killed, but few survived to tell their story. This event is proof in itself that Tibetan women then and now are not just for sitting on the sidelines. We are no less than men. Tibetan women have done just as much and continue to be leaders in the Tibetan movement today. So please join the Tibetan Women's Association of Minnesota on March 12th at the Minneapolis Government Center this Thursday at 5 p.m. to commemorate the 61st anniversary of the Tibetan Women's Uprising Day and all they have done for the movement. Thank you. Show. 